Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to Hearthstone with Northern Lion and Dan. What's up, man? How's it going, Dan? Long time no see. You really dropped the ball on that one, huh? <laughs> well, I think it was like it was like the perfect storm of just everything going on. I was out of town, and then your Super Bowl happened. Right. Yeah. And uh, Hearthstone just kind of <laughs> got left off by the base. Well, and then the tavern brawl was AI only. And you know, where do you really go from all beards? Like we were. <laughs> That's a true an indication. The well might have needed to recharge a little bit, I suppose, <laughs> on deck ideas. Uh, so, in terms of, can you just give me an analogy of what anti-birth and afterbirth plus hitting right around the same time? Could you give an analogy to what that would be like? Um, that would be like you coached two football teams. <laughs> Or like, let me put it this way. You coach one football team, and they're, like, really good. And then 10 days before the state championship, they do, like, the reverse of the fusion dance from Dragon Ball Z. So one football team becomes two football teams. And then you can't really tell which football team is going to go to the state championship. So you kind of just coach both of them. <laughs> Got it. And, and now that I'm with you on this, uh, which team is going to the state championship? I don't know, man. I think, like... Long term, Afterbirth Plus has got a lot of stuff going for it. Short term, I think Anti Birth, you know, wins out from a design and execution standpoint. But I like that Afterbirth Plus can be a platform for for future mods and tweaks and stuff like that. But Anti Birth, like, well, I don't know. You you used to play Isaac, but you don't play too much anymore. Some of the shit in Afterbirth Plus is annoying as all <laughs> the challenges and like some of the rooms are just like mind-boggling to be honest with you i don't know if it was in our skype chat or you tweeted a picture of this room it was like the size of a shoebox, and there was like one free square available <laughs> yeah I, I walked into that with two hp and just like died instantly and i was like oh okay, okay, all right sure yeah you got me good one <laughs> so if you're a betting man in vegas and you had to place a, a small wager which can you hear that can you hear what nothing never mind oh um, all right <laughs> <laughs> which team would you wager on right now well i'd, I'd wager on afterbirth plus because anti-birth is supposedly going to be coming to afterbirth plus eventually oh cool that's cool so i mean it's like I'm, I'm, this is one I'm struggling for, like, a good metaphor for. <laughs> no, I get it, but uh, I think it's, it's like BK's got one good sandwich, but you know McDonald's is going to copy it next season anyway. <laughs> so if you already know that you like the Big Mac and the Nugs, you're going to stick with McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Speaking of McNugs, do you have a Del Taco? I'm, I'm ready to go, by the way. I got my All right, oh, no, I haven't selected classes. All right, I don't know. Do they know. have Del Taco in Canada? Uh, We have... We have some in Vancouver. I think we have like two in Vancouver. Did you ever go there? I have never eaten a fast food taco. In your entire life? In my entire life. That seems like that's a conscious decision. No, well, I mean, it's just my parents used to, like after baseball practice, they take me to the combination Taco Bell KFC, but I'd always get the popcorn chicken, so I never got to experience a Taco Bell taco, not even once. Let's see. I mean, I would frame it in a way where you had the open decision to order the taco. You just chose not to. I, yeah, I should have. But so There's no question about it. So as a kid living the tough life in the gravel pits, what's your excuse now as an adult male? I just have never found the opportunity. Like, first off, Mexican food is not that good up here. What in the world is this? Have you seen this? I don't, but where did you get that mythical card back from? Oh, is this the, like, orange one? Yeah. That was from the Tavern Brawl last week. Oh, wait a second. These cards are all mixed up. Yeah, so the way that this uh, Tavern Brawl works is you choose a class and they make a deck for you, and then you choose a second class, and then your deck is like mashed together from pre-made decks from those two classes. Kind of like Jay-Z and Linkin Park? It is a lot like Collision Course, the best album of 2004. <laughs> is that 2004? Uh, I believe so, yeah. That's crazy. Well, it might be 2005, because it was... Uh, well, I don't know. When did the when did the Black Elf come out? That's like 03? Oh yeah, I was in college. So yeah, it was like early 03. I had a, a Black Album poster on my wall. What a dork! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. This card sucks, man.
So outside of Isaac, what else has been going on? Man? I mean, a lot of Isaac. <laughs> uh, Nick's going away, so like we've been playing Factorio, and he's on that NL schedule, right? He's like, I'm going away for two weeks, so we gotta have like 40 videos in the can. <laughs> and so it's been like, I don't, I, you know, nobody likes to hear you complain. It's a great job. At the same time, it's been real busy, like real busy. That's good though, right? You would you rather be real busy or, or real not busy? No, nah, definitely like really busy. If I'm yeah. not really busy, I don't I don't know what to like do with myself. Yeah, you've got an amuse boost of of games you can play. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. What? Isn't an amuse boost like uh the thing you you have after dinner? Uh, you've got it inverted, Dan. You have it before dinner. You have an amuse bouche before dinner. <laughs> That's that sherbet, right? No, dude, so the amuse-bouche in old cuisine is the course that comes out usually complimentary before the appetizer. Right, but doesn't it clear your palate? No, I mean, it's just, I think it's just meant to be like, you're probably going to be spending a lot of money in this restaurant, so here's like a bite of something in the kitchen. So if that, I thought amuse-bouche, what's, what's the sherbet they give you to cleanse your palate? I have never heard of a sherbet they give you to... Cleanse your palate. They give you like a little, like an extra large size thimble full of <laughs> sherbet before like the main meal. You've never had that? You, you've had that on the regular? I've never heard that at all. I'm not on the regular, but like if you go to like a highbrow restaurant, it's definitely coming. For real? Yeah. I thought, Dude, you, see, cool, I thought you were though. the culinary like oh, expert. <laughs> I mean, we, we have dined out in the past. I wouldn't disagree with that. But um, I have never heard of... Uh, what, what, you see this? I've got a stealth taunt minion. What a waste of my time. <laughs> um, I've, I've never gotten an extra large thimble full of sherbet. Yeah, it's not like a dish full. It's like literally, if you take a large, think of the largest thimble you've ever seen in your life. Fill it with sherbet. <laughs> okay, I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> All right. But, uh, so let me, so I need to, we need to retract it for a second. What would sure. cause you... To go to a Taco Bell or a Del Taco. Right. Or I Taco mean, I, I, I think if... Because Kate's not that uh, in the Mexican food, but I am. Like, when I'm in San Francisco, I'll be like, let's go to the Mission. I'm going to go to, like, El Farolito and get a Mission-style burrito. It's going to be dope. But the Mexican food here is a little hit and miss, and Kate's not a big fan. So I would have to, like... If I was out and about solo, and I was like, I need a fast meal, I think that could be an experience where I would get my first fast food taco. But here's the thing. Have you ever tried Slide and Kate, like, a cheese quesadilla? Something very mild? <laughs> I have. I have, actually. She's okay with it, but it's not really her thing. I can understand. I can understand. So if you were to grace your palate with a fast food taco, do you have, like... Yes. Like the the Cadillac of fast food tacos you'd want to go with. <laughs> I hear that like uh, it's Taco Bell still, right? Like they're the they're the number one choice. So there's this chef I know. Just just call him <laughs> Chef Jokes. I can't think of another name. Right. He so obviously it's Emer Lagasse, <laughs> but you can't say his name because he'd be outed. Pretty much. So so basically he said that. And this is not like, I don't want to get flamed. I don't want to get commented. Like when we talked about the nuggets and I said, it's like pink paste, people got upset about that. <laughs> but like, I guess like the Taco Bell meat is like below like C minus grade quality. Yeah. So, but I don't know what to think about that. Cause like we have like tiers of grocery stores here. You know, there's like the discount grocery store. There's like a normal grocery store. Then there's like Whole Foods, you get up there into the expensive. Then there's like a butcher shop so you can buy like, you know, zebra or something. But <laughs> what? Like, yeah, I'm just saying there's there's many tiers to a grocery store. Even if we go to like our discount grocery stores here, every piece of meat has the sticker on it that's like, you know, certified grade A, triple A, you know, Angus Prime. And you're like, well, if even the discount grocery store is getting the triple A stuff, where is the B and C going? Are they just feeding it to the other cows? <laughs> Which, which then you might infer you're also ingesting it in the grade A meat. I mean, I guess that's true. Yeah, you're getting, you're running the whole gamut. That's what I call a balanced diet. <laughs> and where did I get the idea that you were a vegetarian? I was uh, temporarily. You were? Yeah. 
Malf and I uh, like bet each other that we wouldn't do it. Excuse, oh. excuse me. Wait a minute. Oh no, that, that's my bad. I didn't read the card. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so it's it like, like that's plus four, plus four. No, um, yeah, like you know, I just got the idea one day. We're like, hey, you know, Reporting bet you can't be a vegetarian, and he was like, you're on, and then we did it. How long did you, that's a, that's a hundred percent a Seinfeld episode? But besides yep. the point, what um who won? Uh, we both won. It turns out it's actually like pretty easy. How long did you go? Uh, well, I went until I left for Korea, because they you know they were like, you can't like do that here. <laughs> like what? you, like there there are vegetarians, but it's like extremely not common. So, um. I, uh, oh god, this is a, a freaking combo card. I never play rogue. Dang it. Okay. Oh well. Oh well. Um, yeah, they're like, you know, I mean, I tell this anecdote in the stream sometimes. But they're like, yeah, you can be a vegetarian. That's no problem. You can get like chicken and fish anywhere you want. And I'm like, no, that's not what being a vegetarian is. Like, you know, I only eat like not animal products. And they're like, oh no, like you're, you're fucked. Like even the even the kimchi has like anchovies in it sometimes. Did so I was like, all right, this is this joke's gone too far. So I just changed into being not a vegetarian. Did did your palate change immensely when you moved to Korea? Not really. I think you know it's here's the dirty little secret: is that Korean food, it's not that dissimilar to American cuisine. I think you got, you got like spiced. Fried meats and rice. And, well, there's some stuff, you know, like, you know, blood sausage and stuff like that. Maybe not your favorite, but... Um, Don't they have the dancing squid on the table that you have to eat? Yeah, but that's like... Uh, you never eat that. That's like saying, like, American food is like eating a crocodile. Like, you can you can get it, but that's not like what they're... Like, hey, kids, um, guess what we're having for dinner tonight? Live octopus. Oh, wasn't that... That a dastardly move right there. I'm sorry, Dan, it's Ragnaros the Fire Lord. All right, we're running it back. So I did get a, a gold tusk boar, though. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've beaten you in a, it's probably been a 10 while. matches. Are you going same? Are you going same loadout? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the... I'll change classes. Okay. They're pre-made decks, so it's like, you know, why not? Speaking of pre-made, have you been playing any magic lately? Or is that, by the way, Zero. negative? It's just... No, no time, but how about you? Uh, no, but I've been uh, just scouring a little bit, looking at the new stuff that's on the horizon, you know? They had the ban, uh, standard cards. Wait, what? Like, just, just yesterday they banned three cards out of standard for the first time in, like, four years or something? Why? I didn't see that. It's too powerful, I guess. So what are the value in those cards? Just shoot right through the roof. Yeah, I mean, one of them was, like... One of them is Amrakul, which is like one of the highest value, if not the highest value card from that Eldritch Moon set. Uh -huh. And then there was like an uncommon and then maybe two uncommons from uh, Kaladesh and I think Shadows over Innistrad. Do you think someone gets fired when that happens? I don't know. But I mean, it's big business, so I but guess I wouldn't be surprised. But they're banning like... They made the thing, right? So you would think <laughs> that they would know, like, hey, well, this combination, you know, causes some problems. But I guess it's like, I mean, just to tie it back to your world, like, Isaac, how could you ever test all of those synergies, right? You right. Know? I mean, like, from, from Nicholas's perspective, you know, like, you know, here's the thing. Like, I did a run as the new character. I don't know if you know anything about the new character. No, but spoil but, away. Uh, sure. Yeah, the new character has, like, um... Uh, an item, and basically when you use your space bar, it sucks up whatever item is on pedestals in the room. So you walk into a room and you're like, oh, there's like, um, you know, uh, D6 here. You press the space bar, now the D6 effect is held in your own space bar. So every time you use that in the future, you get all of the items that you've ever sucked up into it. So you can create like an amazing item out of it. So you're telling However, me your space bar could be like 12 items. Yeah, yeah. Easy. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> it's neat. Yeah, it's, uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. However, um, there's something wrong with that. And that's that uh, the if you... If you um, close the game, 
Because you're like, oh, you know, my kid's got to go to the emergency room, you know? <laughs> and then you come back, then all the items have been erased. And you have to start, no matter where you are on your run, every item you've sucked into your space bar has been erased. And in your head, you're like, you know, how can you make a mistake like that? That's like some Bush League stuff. But then you're like, oh, right. They have to test literally like 14 million possible combinations <laughs> of items working together. So I guess it's understandable. And you're saying that only happens when they you would pause or save the game and back out. Well, yeah, if you were like, hey, let's... Uh, you know, like, continue this run later. That cannot be done. So not only do they have to test all the synergies and items, but they have to also test it while backing out. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all I right, mean, I've never even seen this car. Let's see how this works. Night game. Oh, good. Whenever you summon a minion, deal five damage to your hero. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're a healer, though. You got the heals. Yeah, I'm trying to get this guy killed as soon as possible. <laughs> Let's protect him. All right, what do we got here? Ooh. Control an enemy. No, 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 no. Let's do this. Wait, what did you take as your second class? I took, uh, I just picked one class. That's all I did was pick one class. No, but what was your second class? I only picked one. No, you got, on your first turn, you got to pick a, a second class. Oh, I picked uh, mage. mage. Mage, You picked mage again? I didn't pick mage the first time, did I? I think you did. I thought Mage was your least favorite class. It is, but when I play you, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so... But, like, that type of thing, were you salty about that? Or was it just, like, community salt? No, like, I'm starting to get there. You're starting to get <laughs> to the community salt levels? Oh, not, not quite that much, but, like, I'm getting to the point where I'm like, oh, come on. You know, like, well, well, I think what probably didn't help him out. I mean, this is just from someone who's, you know, I didn't really play it. once Afterbirth came out. Then I kind of took the, the foot off the gas in terms of Isaac. But, yeah. But I think what hurt them is the fact that you had this like sweet mod that came out from like, I would say a bunch of jabronis, but that's not the right thing. But a bunch of like right. non-professional. Out of nowhere, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, it's like anti-birth is so of like new enemy designs and the challenges are balanced and the difficulties like tweaked up but in a way that is like compelling and then afterbirth plus comes out and they're like hey we gave you like here's a challenge where you have every curse and you can never see where your items are red hearts and spirit hearts don't exist and every enemy's a champion and you're like well that's not that fun i really think like i i mean like no disrespect at all to to ed or, or nicholas in this one but like it's like they watch too much streaming and we're like the game's too easy we gotta like we gotta fix it because they watch like you know cobalt or me <laughs> or some victor or something win like 80 runs in a row and then they balanced it in a way that is just like not that awesome it's hard but not fun yeah okay. and, but they, they've they've been walking it back a little bit so i think that's good you think at some point like whether it's Isaac or whatever. So there's been, you know, the original Vanilla, Wrath of the Lamb, Rebirth, Afterbirth, Afterbirth Plus. Do you think at some point, like let's just say you were Ed, do you think you get sick of that? Or do you feel like um, like the guy that made Mario and you love it so much you keep mm. iterating on it? How do you think you would react to that? I, I would be, I would probably never stop making Isaac stuff. Mm -hmm. But you, I, I could easily see how you get sick of it, you know? Especially if you're, like, a creative person mm -hmm. and you're, like, I want to be making things that are... I want to make art. I don't want to just, like, make content. Then mm -hmm. I could see how you would get sick of it. Uh, and, I mean, that's, like... Isaac's been his main project for, like, five years. And it was expected to just be, like, a flash in the pan, like, come out and then be done with it. So the fact that he's given it five years is, is more than we could have asked for, I think. But from your standpoint, you're like, you think you would just continue to make games with Isaac in it because people I would, love it so much? 100% I would be Five Nights at Freddy's guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like, integrity is great. Uh, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, like, you're like, well, my last game sold, you know, 4 million copies in a month. It probably didn't sell 4 million, but I'd be like, well, I'll be working on that next game, like, two days later. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I mean, I think that's like true. Like if I think my opinion is like very rarely, and this is not a great analogy. Do you like strike oil or strike gold? So when you find some people like, and then you come out and you you drop the Yeezus album, and it's like, what is this? There there's no sampled beats on this. You know, I <laughs> I think. You know, I don't know. I, I'd imagine it's a tough decision to make, nonetheless. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. Like, you know, you only get one crack at it, like if you're lucky. So, you you said something though that reminded me. You said a line from Scarface, unbeknownst in in when you're explaining that. I don't know if it was someone tweeted or if it was in our Skype chat, but did you see? Like, it's like four and five year olds doing a play of Scarface. Have you oh seen that? yeah. <laughs> Fudge you, Tony. I'm fudging. <laughs> it's so good, yeah. Apparently that was like a viral video, but... Or like it, it wasn't... Um, it was manufactured, I should say, but it's still really good. What do you mean? Oh, what do you mean manufactured? Like it was made by like an advertising firm. It wasn't actually like a fourth grader's production of Scarface. Don't tell me that. I'm sorry to remove all the magic in the world. So that was that whole thing was fake, but it looked like it was like t- taken off like a cheap VHS camcorder. That's that's the problem, man. That's the problem. Uh, who? What company made that? I don't know, but they they deserve whatever they got, man. <laughs> well, my follow up question is gonna be: How did any school or child organization get away with putting that thing together? <laughs> <laughs> you could probably have a kid say the f word even though they didn't say it in the video but you could probably have a kid say the f word if you've got like the screen actors guild on your side right yeah but then he's got a pile as long as they get craft services access like it's no problem but they have a pile of popcorn on their desk but it's not really supposed to be popcorn yeah (laughs) exactly oh remember this guy oh this is your uh uh mox ruby (laughs) <laughs> oh no he's back i forgot about he that gets, guy. he gets out of control man i i know you've been busy when i looked at your rank and i won't reveal it but i'm like ooh, man oh no you know what that is it's <laughs> like dude fucking hearthstone man i played pirate warrior last month won like 11 games in a row from rank 20 to rank 15 it was like that's it i'm good for the month now this month i'm like oh i'll be a good guy I want to play a deck that's not just like, you know, it's over by turn six. And then I play this Reno Mage deck. Every Everybody else on the ladder is playing Reno Mage. The games take like 45 minutes. So, you know, you lose one and you're like, well, that's my Hearthstone time for tonight. I go from rank 18 to rank 19 and then like come back tomorrow, win six in a row to get my position back. Like it's... Uh, it's a problem. And don't even get me started. Everyone who plays Reno Mage thinks they're a freaking uh, smartest person on planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they hit you, uh, hit your minion with a fireball, and then they go, well played. Oh, yeah. Wow. Amazing. You're really good. At... Dan, don't hit me with the staff of a Tish, man. I don't know. That's pretty good. Conv- After you cast a spell, summon a random minion of that cost. I don't. That's too many words. Basically, like you put that out there, and then you cast like a ten mana spell. Mm. <laughs> and then it gives you like a like if I cast a six spell, it gives me a five banger on the board. Uh, it gives you uh, it gives you a six mana minion. Ooh. Oh, so it's the same cost. Yeah. See, this is like. This is my issue with with Hearthstone is like to even get in the realm of that thing you have to have a legendary right so like you're not gonna get a uh, a white card that gives you something that good correct yeah so I, but I guess that's the beauty of Blizzard right well yeah I mean this this is from that card's from an adventure so it's like unlike the packs you're actually guaranteed to get this card if you buy the adventure um, whether that you know sells it for you remains to be seen no that's fair. that's fair that's fair now the question is i always win i have to have to sometimes you got to. i feel you on that one all right hey have you been to any concerts lately or are you not a concert guy not a concert guy for the most part what's the last concert you think you went to uh i took kate to see hatsune miku in seattle What's that for people that don't know, like myself? That's the Japanese uh, 3D animated mm. pop idol. 
I, I still don't follow you. <laughs> <laughs> a Jap so it's like uh, a popular character in Japan that's animated. Yeah. Yeah. You scumbag. Nice kill. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was just about to drop some heat on you too. I was puzzling in my head. I'm like, well, how do I have lethal on this? Uh, oh, maybe the card that says deal five damage. Well, that's I guess that's the thing about this series is we're playing like especially when we play brawl. Like they're not cards that we normally would play. So to have a conversation and then to really be uh you know net decking and try harding, it's <laughs> it's kind of hard to balance it too. At least on my end. Yeah. Anyway. But uh, nonetheless, hey, you won again, Ryan. Congratulations. Hey, you know, feels good. <laughs> no, it's good to be back. I'm glad we could get this one in, and then uh, let's uh, hopefully keep the train running. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was gonna do the the send off, but you should do the send off. I forgot. Too I, much Factorio lately. I think you should do the send off. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, Dan and NL play Hearthstone badly. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Check out both of our perspectives. You can even watch them simultaneously if you want to see what cards we're holding back. And uh, show your support. Subscribe if you want to see more delivered to your homepage whenever they come out. For now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.